Captain Tony Grogan, an ocean warrior who thrives on helping solve mysteries of the ocean using science. Several of us fishing and diving volunteers help shark researchers every year to gather the best available science. There's quite a few sharks along the ledge as you swim. A lot of sharks. Bull sharks and sandbars. Basically right out in front of Jupiter Inlet. You go from a very uh, lit up euphotic zone to a sort of silted and dirtier zone. You got a big hammerhead. Typically when we do this operation, we'll spearfish in the daytime and shark fish at night. There was a break in the weather yesterday. The seas were only two to three feet. So we went out with Captain Jojo, one of our regular volunteers, and we managed to catch the first great hammerhead of this year's project. The shark operating table was a new experience for me. I'd never had a shark at waist high level before on deck, but it made for a much smoother workup and quicker for the shark. So Brian and Jill could work on one thing on one side of the shark while I was doing DNA and Casey tagging on the other side. So it made the workup much easier and smoother for the shark to be released quickly. The first dive I actually ever did was a shark dive in the Bahamas when I was 12 years old. And ever since then, I have been completely intrigued with the shark research that we're doing here in South Florida, and I just can't get enough of it. As administrator of the world's largest spearfishing diving online community, Spearboard.com, Captain Tony Grogan has many friends on all sides of the subject of sustainable fishing, whether they be supporters or opposers. Commercial fishers provide part of humanity's food supply and have concerns about local shark populations that should be considered. Nowadays, these sharks in the Goliath group are there eating 30% of my catch before I even get it in the boat. At the Spearboard Annual Spearfishing Tournament, many fishermen and women donate their barracuda or other fish catch to the Bimini Shark Lab and other researchers to use as bait in shark research on three endangered or near-threatened species, hammerhead sharks, lemon sharks, and tiger sharks. Those three species are also favorites to see underwater by local and tourist divers in the Jupiter area. In the past, Captain Tony would rarely see tiger sharks when diving in Jupiter, Florida. Now he sees them more often, and he believes their population is recovering. There's three reasons I enjoy studying sharks. The first is we don't know much about them compared to other animals. They're hard to take care of, they're big, they're dangerous, you can't keep them in a fish tank. So there's a lot of things that we've known about bony fish for years that we don't know about sharks. So there's a mystery and there's, you know, there's a niche for me to fill. The second reason I like sharks is because it's an absolute rush working with them. When you have a 12-foot animal on the side of the boat or an 8-foot lemon shark in your arms, you know, you feel pretty good and it's exciting. The final reason I enjoy studying sharks is because most of them, most of the sharks that I've worked with are at the top of the food chain. So on a one-to-one -one level, on an ecological scale, these sharks are worth a lot more. You're getting more bang for your buck if you're protecting sharks than you would if you're protecting lobsters or a little goby. As repulsive as it is to some note-take shark advocates, NOAA Fisheries has managed for decades the existing shark fishery that primarily targets the top three species of black tips, spinners, and bull sharks. The commercial fish house buyers have an electronic reporting system in place, and they can be subjected to fines in the hundreds of thousands of dollars for illicit activity. Under the regulations, the fishermen can cut the fins for storage, but must leave the fins naturally attached. The shark meat typically yields between 35 and 80 cents per pound, while the fins can yield around $200 per shark. Now, of course, having end-use buyers of shark fins in China or elsewhere is critical to the economic motivations of the local shark fishers. Human consumption of shark fin soup has resulted in a huge decline in global shark populations, just as the desire for ivory has decimated African elephant populations. However, the managed shark fishery in the USA will probably continue for many years to come, and all stakeholders should realize this. It's okay to stick to your position for or against shark fishing, but let's be practical about immediate regulatory changes. For the year 2016, the NOAA Fisheries Agency has changed the start of commercial shark fishing season in Florida back to January in winter, instead of July in summer, which is when the shark fishing started last year in 2015. A few years ago, when a January start date was chosen, Captain Tony hosted a dinner with many shark scientists and volunteers to organize a lobbying push to change the date back to a July start, which actually happened. The shark fishing start date is important to the scientific research because of the ocean floor geography in the Jupiter, Florida area. The narrowing shallow ocean floor shelf on the east coast of Florida 
concentrate sharks and their prey during the annual winter shark migration from the cold water north to the south and make sharks much more susceptible to harvest. LIDAR maps of the ocean floor for Palm Beach County show the geophysical size of the shelf in this area, which gets significantly narrower the further south you go. The Gulf Stream current runs closer to Palm Beach County than anywhere in the nation, yielding excellent water temperature and visibility year-round. The favorable water temperature and food sourcing may be significant reasons why lemon sharks and other species aggregate offshore of Jupiter in the winter months. The Jupiter location of concern is also an integral part of the FACT array, which scientists use to track movements of sharks and many other species of fish. Underwater acoustic receivers record the pings of sharks passing by that may have been surgically implanted with acoustic transmitters. The three nautical mile line that separates state waters from federal waters is in the midst of a primary shark research area. From that line to the shore, the three research species of hammerhead, lemon, and tiger sharks are protected in state waters. However, to the east of that line, those three species are not protected from commercial shark fishing. After consultation with Dr. Sonny Gruber, Dr. Brian Franks, and others, the geographic area is suitable for a special exemption from shark fishing on the three research species in federal waters would be from Fort Lauderdale to Cape Canaveral. The minimum desired area would be from Boynton Beach to Fort Pierce. The 40-year-old law called the Magnuson-Stevens Act requires NOAA fisheries to describe and identify essential fish habitat for each life stage in the fishery management unit. The description of essential fish habitat shall be based on the best scientific information available. Thus, NOAA Fisheries has an obligation to facilitate the collection of the best available science on sharks in unique geographical ocean areas like Jupiter, Florida. Since the Florida commercial shark fishing activity could impact the scientific research in the winter months, NOAA Fisheries should consider these primary options. Number one, return the shark fishing start date to July of 2016, which is our preference. Or number two, make a special exemption from commercial fishing for the southern narrow shelf area for the three research species of lemon sharks, tiger sharks, and hammerhead sharks on the basis of a scientific research exclusion. Otherwise, how can best available science be achieved? Those who suggest that a solution is a voluntary pledge by a few shark fishers to stay away from the Jupiter aggregation may not fully understand the dynamics of this situation. This idea originated from a shark fisherman and was first made public by shark researcher David Schiffman on December 15th on his Facebook page. While the intention is good, all shark permit holders in the area do not have to comply. They can legally take the three research species. Incidents such as this dramatic result of a hammerhead shark take a few years ago will be allowed by law. Let's encourage NOAA Fisheries to please choose wisely, and let's hope that all stakeholders and resource users will respect each other's points of view so that we can reach a compromise on this important issue.